Thank you, sir. Yeah, I heard you come right here. No questions now. Please let us get on with it. Are you disturbed by what you read in this hour report, sir, as, as uh, some have said? No. I'm disturbed about being pressured to talk about it now. Can't blame us for crying. Thank you. How are you? Good. I've lived with that for a while. Ready, Dole, how are you? One more. I, thank you. I am delighted. Are you something to do? Look at that. He does play. How are you going to be tapping the roof? Thank you. Just so it feels like we're around. We don't have to look like we're around. Just so it feels like we're around. You're still soliciting. I want to do something. I am honestly pleased to present Howard Baker to you today as the Chief of Staff. I have great admiration and respect for Howard, and I know you all share my confidence in him, and I'm certainly looking forward to working with you in the days ahead. And welcome to David. Mr. President, thank you very much. It's uh, one of the prime honors of my life to have an opportunity to continue in your service. I enjoyed working with you in the Senate. I look forward to working with you here. And my commitment is to make this administration in its final two years the very best possible years of your presidency. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you. I understand before we move on that uh, David Wallace didn't have time here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just. Uh, Trying to brief the cabinet on the uh, <laughs> <laughs> talk about our boy is now in the working for Governor Martinez. Is he doing our right? <laughs> <laughs> assured you, you're with friends, and I have a letter here signed by about a hundred uh, Republican officials at the local level of government 
which we wanted to uh, give to you because uh, we just want you to know that we're supportive of you. And I won't take time to read the whole thing, but we do thank you for making America strong again, for bringing inflation and interest rates and unemployment down, for helping to broaden the base of our party and revitalize the Republican Party and make it the party of growth, opportunity, and progress, GOP. And I want to read just <laughs> the last sentence. We know the stress you're experiencing right now is tremendous. So we want to assure you of our prayers that God will give you the strength to carry on and the wisdom to discern in the difficult decisions you must make what is best for the American people. And it's signed by a whole group of Republican officials. Well, I uh, pleased all of you could be here today, and I want to take this opportunity to compliment you for your dedication and commitment during very difficult times. You've exhibited creative leadership in revitalizing your cities, and I also want to thank you for your support. As Republicans, you're certainly a minority in our local officials. I'm sure you often are on the hot seat because of it. But before, Bill, before you lead a discussion among all of us, I wanted to outline very briefly our top three initiatives. Welfare reform. Our goal is to establish a process that allows states and communities to implement their own anti-poverty ideas. Education. We must work together to continue reforms for excellence in our schools. We must set high standards, improve skills, and promote literacy, and we also need to continue work toward drug-free schools. Incidentally, on this, I remember, I'm old enough to remember when the federal government wasn't even a penny's worth part of education in our country. That was the province of the local community and to a certain extent at the state level also. I also remember, and you might be interested to know, that at the first time you know, in that great growth of the federal government, they dried up most of the tax resources, took them for themselves, and left the local communities with the difficulty of where could you turn for needed revenues. And having created then that you were short of money, miss me. Then the government turned around and said, well, we will have to help you out with government grants and programs. And the first time that was ever proposed, a group of educators came to Washington, and completely different than anything that you would imagine. They came to plead for the federal government not to do this, because they feared it would interfere with academic freedom and their right to establish policy. Well, the then director of education just over and over again assured them that no, the federal government had no intention of intervening in any way, just wanted to make money available to them. But one of the educators said, well, we have thought of an idea that could resolve this problem money-wise, but without any risk of outside control. <clears throat> and he said, suppose that we took a figure, we don't know what the figure should be, but just for discussion, $100, and then you would decide whether that anyone could contribute that amount of money to the school of his or her choice. And it would be a, a tax credit, not a deduction. Just subtract that from your income tax. That would be federal money, but certainly no element of control. And the director of education, who had been proclaiming that the government had no intention of interfering, said, well, no, that wouldn't work. He said, under that system, we couldn't achieve our social objectives. Mm. Well, the social objectives, I think, have outweighed some of the money they're putting up. But competitiveness is the third thing. Our people are our most valuable resource, and we've pulled together a diverse package, as diverse as the challenge, I think, before us. And I'm going to challenge you, as I did the governors last week, to work with us on these initiatives. We need your ideas and your support for our legislation. And now I understand, Bill, that You've agreed to moderate a discussion of your ideas for how we can lead a 
strong America into the next century. And I also would be interested in hearing about some of the creative way. Oh, yeah. You forgot me, too. Oh, oh, you remember Marlon. Marlon. Oh, that's the real blood. That's true. <laughs> All right, Ben. Yeah, I know you're God, you got you a new kind of sincere suit. Hey, look, I'm really not trading my action. <laughs> Okay, you can't tell me this. You're right over here on that corner. Ouch. Sure. Uh, over there. All right. Over here. Right here. All right. Um, and can I introduce Grant Green? I think you've met Grant Green. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And Hank Cohen. Yes, President. Um, Mr. President, we thought we would uh, talk about some substantive matters in these few minutes. Uh, and one of the things I would like to do is to have Hank Cohen, who is our, the head of our African division, talk to you a little bit about Mozambique and Renamo, because you've been hearing some things from the conservatives on, on Renamo, and he can uh, tell you where that whole thing stands and what the State Department view really is of uh, that situation. Mr. President, let me tell Ambassador Cohen, I sat by his son coming back from Washington. I'm from Miami the other day. Did he tell you why, why he doesn't get out of the house and go get an apartment? Or... <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to uh, talk to him about it. No. Hello, Sorry, keep well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, that's uh, 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 Mayor, how are you, sir? Oh, good, good to see you again. Yeah. You met our chief of staff, Howard Baker. Contrast. 
because we went into right just through the gate there. There was a, a large store, and we were curious. And we went in, and our party went in. And there was naturally a photographer with us. And we started um, taking some pictures. Suddenly, there was a hand on his shoulder, <laughs> and his camera was buttoned up quite quickly. And as we came out, we were crossing the parking lot. All of a sudden, right there in plain sight, were two of the East German police seizing one of their citizens and grabbing him and starting to search him. We didn't stop. We didn't know what, his, uh, what had brought it about, but uh, there was a contrast between the East and West. Mary Ann, I said Mary Jane. <laughs> you mean I could have gotten away with it? Yeah, you did. When as and if the Senate agrees. Judge, congratulations. Thank you. We're close to the same day to run. <laughs> well, that's good. You take the chair up there. All right. And uh, I'll be the same. President, what do you think you have to do to restore your credibility? Ask me that question after a speech tonight. Do you still think that Colonel North is a national hero? His military record was one of numerous rewards for his courage. How about his uh, involvement in the Contra situation? I'm not going to comment on that. Will you tonight? <laughs> what is Mrs. Reagan's role in running the government, Mr. President? <laughs> I think this is one that has been bandied about in the press. That is fiction, and I think it is despicable fiction, and a lot of people ought to be ashamed of themselves. Which part of it do you have the greatest objection to, Mr. President, of the many reports that have uh, been written about that? No. 
idea that she is. You realize I'm breaking my rule here. <laughs> Touched her not here with that. But the idea that she's involved in governmental decisions and so forth and all of this. And being a kind of a dragon lady, there is nothing to that. And no one well, who you knows know who her said, well would ever believe it. You know who said dragon lady? Your chief of staff. <laughs> No, no, Helen. I didn't say that. That's <laughs> <laughs> not right. Anyway, is she pretty upset about it all? Well, obviously. She is, yes, of course. What, what do you think can be done about it? Thank you. Well, maybe I just said a few things here that'll make some of you think twice before you repeat those things that have been said. Do you dispute the idea that she had a role in the uh, departure of Mr. Regan? No. And as I, as I stated in my statement, he had spoken to me months before about his desire to leave. And then when all of this came up, decided that he would see it out and wait until after the Tower Commission report came in. Mr. President, you mean you, you do dispute the reports that, uh, that she had a role in that? Of course I disagree with that. As I say, he had a letter Resignation dated October. He did? How come we didn't see it? What? How come we didn't see it? Because, as I say, he decided to wait because of the problems with the place. No phone hangouts. Thank you. <laughs> so you're not going to apologize tonight to the American people? Tune in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So you have to stop. No, it's not down. What was it you said the other day? Nobody was going to pull back. Stop shooting now. I said, as far as recently as I said, the tradition was.